life and there's no evidence of salvation or righteousness there's no change there's any difference between now and one year ago in his life the secret is this it's not meditating on the word of god it's not meditating on the word of god how is it somebody comes like this once a week and the faith level is going lower and the righteousness is going lower and the respect for god and the house of god is going lower and it appears as he looks like somebody who does not have any touch of god upon his life you know the secret why there's no meditation on the word of god daniel meditated on the word daniel said, my cogitations troubled me my thoughts trouble me and i meditated on the word that's what the lord is calling you on i show that will meditate upon the word we hear verse 99 i have more understanding than all my teachers and for thy testimonies are my meditations i come to the new testament in first timothy chapter 4 first timothy chapter 4 we're looking at verse 15 first timothy chapter 4 we're looking at verse 15 meditate upon these things you see that's the word of god it says don't just hear don't just listen don't just read don't just study meditate think through about it how does this apply to my life what's the implication of this for me and what will be the effect and the power of this in my life? Meditate. Meditate on these things. Give thyself. What's the next word? Tell me out loud. Holy, completely, entirely unto them. That is the things to hear. You, you kind of plunge your life into that. And you allow it to saturate your heart. And to influence your heart. That's the reason why we're not coming here for religious knowledge. We're not preparing you for school certificate exam in Bible knowledge. We're preparing you for heaven. And if you're going to get to heaven, we must meditate on the word we are listening to. And the meditation must have a transforming effect, a changing effect in our lives, so that it turns us away from sin, and it turns us unto righteousness and to the Savior. That's why it says, meditate upon these things and give yourself holy unto them, that their prophet may appear unto all. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine continuing them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and then that do what hear thee we're coming back to daniel now daniel chapter 7. as we look at the words tonight and we look at what the lord is telling us on prophetic insight into the times of the gentiles prophetic insight into the times of the gentiles um, Nebuchadnezzar was a Gentile. Cyprus, um, Darius was a Gentile. Cyrus was a Gentile. Alexander the Great was a Gentile. And, uh, the Antiochus Epiphanes was a Gentile. All those Gentile kings, they were Gentiles. And all the time they reigned, all those empires were referred to them as the times of the Gentiles. And now God is giving us an insight a prophetic insight into the times of the gentiles that is the babylonian empire and the middle persian empire the grecian empire and the roman empire we're going to divide the study tonight to three parts number one the interpretation of the ferocious beasts the interpretation of the ferocious beasts number two the invasion of the false beast the invasion of the fourth beast and then number three the identity or the identification of the final future beast the identification the identity of the final the future beast i come to daniel chapter 7. in daniel chapter 7 we're looking at verse 15. daniel chapter 7 verse 15. i daniel was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. What if he did not ask? Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. 
if he didn't ask for the meaning, for the interpretation, he would have lost that interpretation. But he said, I came near. And I asked and I demanded of him, what is the truth of all this? And he told me and made me to know the interpretation of the things. This is the interpretation of, he was given in verse 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. You see, when you study the Bible very carefully, you understand the Bible interprets itself. So we don't have to say, I think the bees represent such. I feel maybe the interpretation is this. Or uh, uh, some, in my opinion, I think that this must be the interpretation. There's no opinion here. And there's no thinking here. And it's not a maybe here. Here is what the angel told Daniel in verse 17. He said, these great beasts, which are four, they are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Well, if these are four kings, and they are going to have four kingdoms, uh, what's the part of the people of God? What's the part of the covenant keepers, of those who have made covenant with the Lord? What's the part of the children of God, those who are saved, and those who are sanctified, and those who are following after the Lord, and those who belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords as the subjects of the kingdom? What will be our part? The angel said, all those kings of the earth, they're going to vanish away. They'll come and they'll go. They arise and then they fall, and they come alive and then they die. But the kingdom eventually will be given to the saints of the Most High. But sixteen again, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. Will possess the kingdom in Jesus' name. You see, it's always the attitude of Daniel. He always sought. To find out the meaning of what he saw, the meaning of what was revealed unto him. He was not just a careless listener to the word of God, that we just listen, as our people say, that the word will come in one ear and then go out the other ear. No, Daniel was a person that he wanted to know, he wanted to find out. That was the constant attitude of Daniel. Look at chapter 8 and verse 15. Daniel chapter 8 verse 15. And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. And sought for the meaning. What a good example, a great example and model for you and for me. That as he saw the vision and as he had the words, he sought for the meaning. I want to understand this. I want to understand so I can apply it to my life. I want to understand so that I'll be able to take caution or precaution. So that the judgment coming upon the unbelievers and upon the world will not come upon me. So that I will not take part in the indignation and the wrath and the judgment that is coming upon this old world. That's why he wanted to know. And you must want to know. He wanted to find Find out his sword for the mean. Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I and I heard a man's voice behind the bars of Eli, which called and said, Gabriel, that's, a, that's an angel, make this man to understand the vision. It was the desire of his heart, wanting to know. Wanting to find out that mage angel Gabriel to be sent from heaven now to give him the meaning. Verse 17, so he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid. And I fell upon my face. But he said unto me, understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall, shall be the vision. Angel Gabriel said, understand, thou son of man. Because this will come at the end. Look at verse 19. And he said, Behold, I will make thee to know. Behold, I will make thee to know. If you have a desire that you want to know, if you are not just coming to the Bible, sir, because that's habit, habitual, you know, I'm just coming because I've always come and I always keep my record clear. I'm always present. Yes, sir, I'm here. 
if that's not your purpose, if you really come with your heart, with your mind, with the intention, you want to hear from the Lord, then you want to know the meaning of what you are learning. You are not somebody that will be sleeping and dozing while the Bible study is going on. That's all the time, all through the time you are asleep. And then we say, now rise up and let us pray. Then you rise up. And then in the prayer, you say what you have always said. Because, after all, you didn't hear anything. You were sleeping throughout. But if you are awake and you are telling the Lord, I want to get the best out of the world like Daniel, then God will send the spirit of understanding and knowledge to every one of us in Jesus' name. I mean, your amen there. In verse 19, and he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the end, at the time appointed, the end shall be. Look at chapter 9. Chapter 9 of Daniel. I'm reading from verse 21. Daniel chapter 9, verse 21. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer. Even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me. When Daniel thought about it, it wasn't just a thinking in the brain or thinking in the mind. It was thinking with prayer. He was meditating with prayer and he prayed about it. Oh Lord, give me understanding. Oh Lord, let me know the meaning of this revelation. Oh Lord, what's the part of a believer in this revelation? And what concerns the nation of Israel in this revelation? Oh Lord, what concerns the Gentiles in this revelation? Oh Lord, what, how do I prepare myself so that all the calamities coming upon the heathen nations at the end of the world will not be upon me, oh Lord? How can I, how can I I be at peace with you when the whole world has gone astray. He was praying and meditating at the same time. And then the Lord sent the angel again and touched him. And then it says in verse 22, And he informed me, and he talked with me, and said, Oh Daniel, I am now come for to give the skill and uh, understanding. He'll give us that skill and understanding in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10 verse 10. Daniel chapter 10. We're looking at verse 10. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to thee. Understand, understand the words that I speak to thee and stand upright. And stand upright. You know, you cannot stand upright if you don't understand the word of God. How to stand, how to take your stand, uncompromising against sin. If you don't meditate on the word of God, you are not going to know the danger of sinning. You're not going to know the peril, the judgment that come as a result of sinning. You're going to be as careless as those religious Pharisees in the synagogue at the time of Christ. He preached and preached and preached unto them. He didn't make any change because they didn't have understanding. And they couldn't stand upright. In fact, Jesus gave the parable of the sower. He said, the soil went forth to sow, and he said, the seed is the word of God. And when somebody hears and does not understand, then Satan will come immediately and take away the word that he hears, so that he will not be converted, he will not be saved. But it is when you have understanding of the word, and the grace of God will come into your life, then you'll be able to stand upright in that verse 11. For unto thee am I now said, and when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. In verse 12, then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, you set your heart to understand. You tuned your heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard. I am come for thy words. I am come because of your words. I pray that you have the same attitude of Daniel. 
I said you have this at your Daniel. Then you have proper understanding of the word. And the understanding you have of the word will make you to act right and live right and go right in the right direction. And the understanding of the word will bring conviction. And that conviction will lead to conversion. That will lead to consecration because of the understanding that you have in the word of God. Without understanding, your head might be enlightened. Without understanding, you might store up a kind of heavy information, but information that is useless, that doesn't change the life. But it is the understanding of the world that drives you to your knees. And then you're seeking the grace of God, saying, Oh Lord, now I understand. I understand what is coming upon this world. I understand that this Babylonian kingdom that I see now, it will come to an age. I understand that there's nothing that stands forever here on earth. The kingdom and the dominion of the Middle Persian Empire will come to an end. It is the understanding you have that you know that the Grecian Empire that will come after that will come to an end. Even the Roman government that will come after that, it will come to an end. And because there is nothing stable, there is nothing steady, there is nothing lasting, there is nothing enduring here on earth, you will look up to the heavens because you know that is what where you have an enduring treasure, an enduring inheritance. That's why the understanding of the word is so very important. And I pray that God will give us that same heart of Daniel in Jesus' name. And we're looking at uh, we're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 11. Let's see the attitude of these New Testament believers. They were born again, they knew the Lord, then they heard the word of God, like you are hearing tonight, coming to the Bible study. And then what did they do after they heard that word? That's why they were strong. That's why they were steadfast. That's why they lived sanctified, holy, pure, righteous lives. Because of their attitude to the word. Let's look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 17. I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. More noble than those in Thessalonica. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. As for receiving the word of God, they received the word. They received the word with all readiness of mind. But they went beyond that. They sat quietly listening to the word. They concentrated listening to the word. They took in the word while they heard. They assimilated what they heard. They meditated on what they heard. It went beyond that. In that verse 11, it says, in verse 11, and then it said, and they received authority of mine, and they searched, and they searched, and they searched the scriptures daily, not only Monday night. They searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. That means that after the Bible study, they were not giving to church, 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 talking, talking, talking. They were not giving to being talkatives. They were not giving to business as usual. After they heard the word, they kept on searching the word. They kept on studying the word on their they, they kept on looking over the outline again. And they kept on applying the word of God into their hearts again. That's what brought the change. That's what brought the transformation. That's what brought the sanctification after the salvation. And then it tells us in verse 12, Therefore, many. Therefore, that means as they sought, as they examined, as they looked over the word again, it says, Therefore, many of them believed, and of honorable women, which were Greek son of men, not a Feel. We're looking at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 23. James chapter 1. We're looking at verse 23. It says, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, if anyone be a shallow, superficial hearer of the word, and there's no intention to do, there's no commitment to do. 
There is no consecration to observe and apply the word. If any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass, in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. That wasn't Daniel. Daniel never forgot because he sought to have an understanding because he sought to have the application of the word in his life and his cogitations and thoughts were on the word but the people that do not search and dig deep into the word to understand so that the word can have a changing lasting transforming effect on them they'll just be as they were before they came to the study i pray that will not happen to you in jesus name in Luke chapter 8, I'm reading from verses 11 to 12. Luke chapter 8, verses 11 and 12. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are those that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved our intention of studying this word of god is to get saved and to get sanctified and to get ready and prepared for heaven we're not interested in just studying just having knowledge that doesn't get us to heaven we want to get saved get sanctified get holy and pure get righteous before the lord and get to heaven that's what we study and so if we're going to have that purpose and that intention fulfilled we must make sure that we study to profit and i pray the word will profit every one of us now coming back to daniel chapter 8 daniel chapter 8 the angel gave him the interpretation of what he had seen and daniel took that to heart daniel chapter 8 we're looking at verse 19 and he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. At the time appointed, the end shall be. Verse 23. And in the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, understanding that sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people and through his policy also he shall cause craft deception deceit to prosper in his son and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many he shall also stand up against the prince of princes who is the prince of princes there jesus christ but he shall be broken without hands he's talking about that one that will eventually come and fight against the children of israel and then even will fight against Christ because he is Antichrist. Yet he shall be destroyed and he'll be broken and that without hands. Come back to chapter 7, verse 21, talking.